G'day everyone, we're back in the food room today and the recipe we're doing is what we call speedy bolognese jacket potatoes. Now before we make a start in touching any of our ingredients, we need to make sure our hygiene is sorted. So I have washed my hands and I've been over to the sink, it's nice warm soapy water and I've washed that my hands for about 20 seconds or singing that happy birthday song quietly to yourself. My hair is up and my apron is on. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn our oven on to 200 and turn the fan on. And if you're in a classroom with students, it's important to make sure that, you know, someone can turn the oven on, but the person, if they're cooking in pairs, should be also responsible for that as well. And then myself and my food assistant, we usually tag team, so we go around and make sure all the ovens are on in the room properly and then we let each other know. I'm gonna run through the ingredients that we have out today. We've got two large potatoes, mm, they're looking awesome. We've got our lean beef mince at the back there. We've got a clove of garlic, and you need to explain what to do with a clove of garlic, because so some kids won't have seen that one. Uh, 200 grams of chopped tomatoes in a bowl, and we're gonna add half a teaspoon of sugar to that. And then we've got another half a cup of some frozen vegetables. So let's have a plate. Okay, so we've got our potatoes, and what we're going to do is stab these quite a few times. And I've already done one, because there's no real attractive way of showing you how to stab the potatoes. So we do that quite a lot. The result and the outcome is good, but you still got to work at it. Okay, now we're going to go in the microwave for about three to four minutes. Now I'm actually going to put these in the microwave for four minutes because they're nice and lovely size. So back to our microwave. And then what we're going to do is we'll make a start on cooking our mince while that's cooking. Here we're going to get um, our sugar, measure that off, put that into our tomato, making sure all our ingredients have their own utensils so we don't have any cross contamination. We're going to go back over to our frying area and I'm going to put our oil on. I've turned the gas on. You don't have to have it at a cracking fire and um, flaming inferno because gas is, gives us a nice automatic heat. I'm gonna put a splash of oil today. Sometimes you need to do your correct, precise ingredients, don't get me wrong, but today I think a splash of oil will just go well. Now I'm gonna leave that to heat for the moment. I'm not leaving a flame unattended and I'm going to add our mince to that. I am gonna show you how to cut up a garlic bowl. So uh, this is our garlic and it has a little bit of skin on that. I saw this on TV. You put a bit of pressure on there and can you see how that little film came off that? It's a lot easier than trying to pick it off. And then that's gonna go into our food scrap container that we have on our bench. I am just going to chop the end off again in the food scrap container. And then I'm going to chop that up nice and fine, like watching out for my fingers. Now it depends how finely you go with the um, garlic and what you're cooking. Um, you know, sometimes you might like a piece of garlic, that's fine. You can uh, not chop it up as fine, but you know, sometimes you do need to chop it up like that. Okay, I'm going to put our mix into our fry pan. I can hear that, that's just starting up there now. Now, nobody wants uncooked mince or nobody wants boiled mince. So what we're gonna do is fry that up. And it won't take very long. We've got a nice hot stove top. We're gonna to break that up as, you, as it cooks. 
Otherwise, what can happen is uh, you just get your big chunks and it's just nicer and presents better if it's all chopped up. Did you press stop? Okay, you can see I've been working at my nips and I've got a lovely sort of texture and consistency there. But I did hear the microwave a lot. So I'm going to go over to my microwave. Ooh, look at my taters. So good. And they're going to go into the oven for another 10 to 15 minutes. So that goes on there. Now, if you can come in and have a look, you can see how there's lots of holes in our potatoes. The reason we have those is so that they don't burst and the steam can come out of them. So I'm safely going to go over to the oven. I'm going to open the oven door completely so it doesn't bounce back. The tray is going to sit landscape at the top where the heat goes and that's going to go on there. Now I'm going to check the time because we've got lots going on this morning and I really want to make sure I can get that out at the right time. So I've written that down today. Now, going back over to our mitts, our garlic is there, so that's going to get popped straight into the fry pan. Mix. And we've already added our sugar to the tomato. And sometimes that takes the tanginess or the acidity out of the tomato. Oh, there we go. Giving that a stir. Now, it would be nice if we just threw everything in and off we go, but what we're going to do is leave this on the stove top for a few minutes and then we will add our vegetables. Okay, we'll come back when that's a little bit done. So you can see our mint and our tomato and garlic and a little bit of sugar is starting to thicken up nicely. So I'm going to take our frozen vegetables, put that in there, give that a stir. Now I am going to let that cook for a minute, but then I will probably turn that down because my potatoes actually have about another six or seven minutes. And I don't want that all dry. I would like to still have some of that juice for the um, meat mixture to go on the potatoes. So our potatoes are out of the oven and what we're going to do is we're just going to cut them one way and then the other way. Now depending on their consistency, and you can use a tea towel to hold the potato if it gets too hot, you can give it a bit of a push and then it comes up together. But it's hot and you know, see how you're going. Then we're going to take a spoon and we're going to put our ingredients on top. We're going to give that a bit of a squish in there. And you'll keep going. Okay, I know it's falling down the side, but by jingos, it does look tasty. And then we have our Potato and vegetable today.